to 1990 now, and King Country faced Zinzan Brook at his best. As Eti has it, plays 20 metres out. Here's Zinzan Brook. What a brilliant try from Zinzan Brook. Look of forwards, just a little bit slow getting there. Getting there in ones and twos. Steve McDowell was one of the first there, though, and away he goes to Zinzan Brook. And he gets another one. That's two today for Zimzan Brook. Here's Zimzan Brook again. Up to Kerwin. Kerwin popping it up to Zimzan. He gets number three. A well-worked move. Just got a hand on it. Here's Auckland from the five-meter scrum. Popped up. Here's Zimzan looking for number four. And there it is. Auckland 58 to three. Next, another away from home challenge against Poverty Bay. A lot of open field here for John Kerwin. Jason Goldsworth's up from fullback. Nice pass to Kerwin. And John Kerwin goes in for the first try of the afternoon. Wilkin backs again with an opportunity. Frank Bunce. This is Bunce who's having a very good game. Brushing off two or three tackles. Innes, has he got the pace? Back to Bunce again. To Mark Carter. Carried on to Alan Witten. And often score their second try. From the penalty, a planned move on here is a big gap opens up like the Red Sea there for Zinzan Brook, and away goes Craig Innes. Auckland 42, Poverty Bay 3, to the Southland Challenge next in Auckland, and the home team welcome back Michael Jones after a year's injury break. That's Michael Jones, finds his man with a pass, finds Zinzan Brook. Two to Marla. Lovely try. And that's the kind of benefits you get when you have Michael Jones in your team. Another good tackle and pass by Michael Jones. Oh, there's Jones out in the centre. That is superb play by Jones. Brook to Carhill, Kerwin. Brook again. Carhill. And Auckland starting the second half in fine fashion as Bernie McCarhill goes right around the score at the end of a sustained piece of attacking play. Hewitt, Fox, McCarhill, Kerwin bursting through right. That is as smooth as silk. Oh, right comes inside out. And Jones is going to get a try. A typical piece of Michael Jones support play. Well, he made his name as an All Black on that kind of support play. And after not playing for Auckland for 30 long months, he supports brilliantly again. And the comeback is complete. And look at this. Standing O for Michael Jones as he scores under the post. Auckland 78 to 7 winners. In the next challenge, Otago came to town and fancied their chances of winning. But the first half was a demolition of those hopes. It was Auckland's best 40 minutes yet with the shield. Quick and decisive. Here's Fox. Tipped on by Kerwin. Terry Wright. Auckland in already. Otago in 1990 really bore the brunt of, uh, of, of that revenge from the, from the previous challenge. It was, it was a superb performance by the Auckland guys. Um, it was one of those sort of uh, um, error-free 40 minutes. Um, quite, quite, a, quite a magic display and I don't think any side uh, would have come close to, to, to Auckland uh, on that occasion. You know, it was a tight five. I mean, at the end of the day, that was, I think, an area where Otago always struggled with Auckland, was in the tight five. They could generally match us in most other areas, in, in the back line, in the loose forward row, but up front in the tight five, they tended to struggle, obviously, at um, scrum and line-out time, and then you could go on to second phase from there. And the guys were primed. They did a great job up front. That was probably the, the highlight, or probably the best performance that I've been involved in in terms of the Auckland team, in terms of... 40 minutes of rugby played in that and that uh, game was just superb. The best 40 minutes of my life, I reckon. Everything just bounced that way. Everything went the right way when we were up 39-0 by half time. So the shield does that. You know, you have the teams that come out and just they just go at you for for 60 minutes and then blow out and you take over in the last 20. Or then your days click where well, you just blow teams off the pace. Here's a big scrum, Auckland. The weight goes in. Brook holds and gets a try. Did he 
Zinzan Brook. Picked up the bounce. Kerr and Terry Wright raging up, and Wright could run in. The Terry Wright Zinzan Brook try scoring spree continues. So here's Jason Hewitt, Auckland in another great attacking position. Hewitt. Away to Kerwin, right was looming. Here's Kerwin. Might have gone all the way himself. Zinzan getting close. Yes, a try. The show goes on. Hewitt feeds the spray. Here goes Zinzan. Hewitt through. 39 to nil at half time. Otago were better in the second half. Hope ready to take it out, but in fact it goes to Forster now. Haggard. Here's Cooper. Is playing well. Greg Cooper. Here's Boa. Capture. What a great try. Well, Otago can do it all right. Reeling from that first half blitz. Still. Here comes Zinzan. And Auckland now on the board in the second half. Zinzan Brook gets his third try. 45 to 9, a great win. North Auckland were next. Cleanly hooked. Done. Moving it wide to Carpenter Woodman by Johnson. Beautifully picked up there by Tui Gamala. But Younger did well to pull him down from behind. Jason Hewitt showing great resilience as he breaks out a couple of tackles. Alan Wetton, there are a few metres outside the 22. He waits for his forwards to get there. Now that's along the Auckland back line. For Carhill to Ennis, to John Kerwin. He's got right with him, but he doesn't need the speed, speed of Terry Wright and John Kerwin. 15 minutes of the match remaining as Hewitt frees it for his backs on halfway. Craig Ennis again showing good hands. Macau times his pass nicely to Tuigamala. Looks for Terry Wright. Terry Wright steps out of one tackle. Goodbye, says Terry Wright. He leaves Johnston spalling on the 22. Try. Auckland 41, North Auckland 21. Seven more tries, but only one in the next challenge from North Harbour. There's the tap. Box is left out. It's gone to McCarr Hill. It's gone to Jones. Oh, lovely move. And Michael Jones is in under the post. I guess that's one that uh, they haven't seen before. And because it's a rarity to see Michael Jones out there in the centres, having missed all those months, it uh, enabled him to get through. Beautifully worked move here by Auckland. And what a magnificent runner Michael Jones is. Here he is lurking in midfield straight through those two tackles. And like a greyhound, under the bar he goes. Fox has converted. The 18-9 win over North Harbour it's took Michael Auckland Jones through to the right. Canterbury Challenge, the last of the season. This hugely controversial match had a fiery start. And there's a dangerous play. Well, that's a bit interesting. One of the Auckland players jumps on one of the Canterbury men and stops him in the chest. And then the fight started and the referee changed the decision. Look for the next Auckland player to jump in. It was uh, one of the Wettons jumped right in the chest of that man who's rolling over there. And then from there, a fight started. And Number six uh, is being spoken to, and I, I think Rob Penny, he's sent off. Someone is off. He sent him off. John Bucket, I think, in his 100th game, is he off? I think he's off, and no one knows it yet. John Bucket, in just a second minute, a player's been sent off. John Bucket, in his 100th game for Canterbury. The Auckland Grabbers, old boy, playing on Eden Park, is sent off. And that is a shame, but referee Lawrence seemed very determined. But I reckon the first offence was the Auckland player, and it was... Here you watch this. Gary Wetton is the man. He stumps on the Auckland player, and then if we let the replay run on, you'll see that the boot went in from Buchan, and the referee changed his mind, signals the penalty to Auckland, and Buchan is off. Phil Cropper has come down. Now, I think the law is that he can be replaced... And here comes Phil Cropper to come on and replace him. Now, there's a little lucky break here for Canterbury because Cropper is a former hooker, even though we know him now as a, a flank forward. 
So Fox kicks out. Up goes Fleming. Deflects with two hands to Bassett. This is Coffey. Here's Taylor for the first time. He's uh, also celebrating 100 games. He'll have a little more of a game than John Buchan, who's been sent from the field. Now, this is the first time that a scrum has been called uh, while... Uh, now, Rock Penny has been called out by the referee. Now, this is getting ridiculous. What the heck is happening in this ball game? They're going to have to work out what they're going to do with their front row because they've lost their hooker. And it may be that Canterbury have decided not to have any scrums uh, in this from now on. Now, the referee is asking, have you got a hooker? And Robbie Dean's gesture is saying, we haven't got a hooker. I don't think he's telling the exact truth because... Uh, because Cropper has been a hooker in his time, so they're going to have free kicks whenever there's a scrum. That's what the game will be. The rules have been changed uh, earlier that year or the previous year, um, basically for safety reasons, um, that, that scrummages wouldn't be allowed to be put down with, without a proper front row and replacements were, were, were permitted. And uh, it was discussed at, at the committee level down in Wellington that, that no union and no coach would, would, would ever allow that sort of debacle to happen. I, Unfortunately, I don't think the, the, the coach, Frank Jack, was involved in that decision of what happened. And uh, it, it came down to a player's decision. But, but the pity, I, I believe still, that the, that the Canterbury Union itself hasn't stepped in at some stage and, and uh, basically said this should not have happened. At the 22-metre line. Now, we may be going to have a game here where there are no more scrums. Referee has signaled a free kick. There'll be no more scrums, folks, in the game. This is a kind of a... Rugby union game of the future, but it also means that uh, there could be drop kicks flying in all directions from these moves. It's Greg Coffey this time, and that's how it's going to be for Canterbury. And I guess the game that will always stand in my memory for all the wrong reasons, and it would have destroyed the culture of the Shield, was the 1990 Canterbury no scrum debacle, when Auckland could easily have lost it. And that would have, I think, soured rugby for many, many years because it would have been all for the wrong reasons. It's quite ironical because I actually played in the Colts with Phil Cropper and he was the, he was the reserve hooker or the, or the other hooker. So it was quite ironical that he came on and he didn't want to play hooker. Um, but, you know, that's, that's the way they played and it was just a, a, a different game and uh, that's history now. It was farcical, um, but I guess in a funny way an interesting experience because I, um, we played under almost a com we played a different game completely so i mean you just put it away in, in, in the memory box <laughs> i loved it i think i was the only one on the day that didn't criticize it because i enjoyed it because we were running everything so you know the game sort of quickened up for me and it uh it sort of took a lot of the, the broken stuff out of it so i actually enjoyed it i'd be one of the only players there that enjoyed it but the tidies you know they don't like that sort of stuff they like to mix it a bit well here's what we can see in the program today but the referee can't see for two years, Phil Cropper was a New Zealand Colts hooker and had one match for Canterbury A in that position. Now, there's a fair measure of uh, credence you've got to give to the Robbie Dean's theory because Cropper has not played hooker in representative rugby for a couple of years. But Sean Fitzpatrick, he knew, and he reported that to the referee, but the referee said something along the lines of, uh, I don't know that. You may be saying that, but I don't know that. And I wonder if the message will get out to him at half time. Eighteen minutes gone, first half. There's the score on the big board. And Fox is kicking superbly. He's added three more into a strong westerly win. And Auckland uh, nine, Canterbury three, three penalties to a drop goal. The five-metre scrum is not allowed. And it's a free kick now to Canterbury. They could get another drop kick here. Where is Greg Coffey? That's him to the left of your screen. And he could be the key man if they decide to have a drop kick for goal. He already has one. Bassett is the one to watch. She's taking it back. And Greg Coffey will be the man to watch. He's going to have another drop kick for goal. Let's find Greg Coffey. He's away to the left. He's the man who once got 43 points in a club game. And that's another three for Greg Coffey today. 12 all. And this game that's rapidly becoming a mockery continues. 12 all is the score. There's Cropper throwing. Bassett. 
Not straight. Now here's a chance for Auckland to, because if you elect not to have scrums, then these become free kicks, and it's a clear shot at goal. But for a guy like Fox, this could be meat and drink. There it goes. It'll be a drop kick. And that's a goal. 21 to 15, and all 21 to Grant Fox. So Fox has got all 21 so far. There he goes again. And that's another one. 24 points for Fox. The gap is again nine points in favour of Hawkins. 49. So Cropper, he throws. Gary Witten palms away to Fox. Here's Innes. This looks sharp. Kerwin, Terry Wright. So into the backs again, near the end of this game, which has got four minutes to play, four minutes to the end of the season. Kendall can flash it one more time. Craig Innes has had such, such a good year. Let it go. Michael Jones trying to run it back. Now it's to Taylor. McCormick. Fast hands will make a break. Philpott. Got coffee with him. Well picked up Graham Bashik. So at halfway, the last act of this topsy-turvy game. Canterbury bravely running it in their backs. And it's Phil Pot from the left wing across on the right. There's Ian Fleming. There's Shane Philpott again. Oh, there's players out in the centre of the field. The game is a shambles with Gary Witten out there. Bashup, Gary Witten still a country mile offside. Here's Mortsel. The conversion made it Auckland 33, Canterbury 30, one of the craziest games. Here's the summary for the fifth full season Auckland had the Ranfurly Shield. Now on 40 occasions, Auckland had been under siege.